everyone. I'm going to try to keep this video pretty damn short. Actually, I'm probably going to cover this article in a future live stream to further expand and offer a little bit more nuance to my uh, position <laughs> regarding this particular article. Anyways, let me get to the headline here real quick. Christopher Kissinger, can the notwithstanding clause be used to violate pre-existing rights? There's ample evidence that freedom of religion was an accepted principle within Canada's constitutional architecture well before the Charter. Christopher Kissinger, special to National Post, May 5th, 2021. Ooh, a special to the National Post. So this Christopher Kissinger must be some kind of a legal scholar or someone who truly understands liberty, right? And there's a picture of the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms right there, right? So I guess, well, actually now that's making me pause for thought <laughs> because this is the problem, folks. If you're relying on a document drafted and implemented by the government, right? And that's the thing. It's not even the American government. It's the Canadian government, right? But either way, if it's those who want to rule over you are the ones who are writing the law and think about it, also the ones who get to interpret the law, well, you're doing things wrong. You're doing liberty wrong, right? If, if that's your methodology or how you determine if something is legitimate or not or if that right exists or not. Once again, you should never have to rely on a government document to understand or realize that, yeah, you have an inherent and an able right to be free, to not be a sir, subject, or slave to no man, woman, or government. But once you try to get into the political realm or, or play around with legalese, once again, then you can completely cause an entire, not just generation, but an entire country of people to believe in false concepts, misinformation, and absolute lies that are based on nothing more than the concept of, yeah, I have the right to rule you. It says so right here. <laughs> Once again, a complete charade, and I hang my head in shame on a daily basis almost for the sheer fact that the overwhelming majority of Canadians don't even understand what it means to be free. What a sad and sorry state of affairs. Let me answer the question for you right now. No withstanding clause, no, no clause whatsoever has any genuine authority to override or ignore your inherent or inalienable rights, regardless of what the politicians or lawyers say. The Quebec Superior Court's recent ruling on Bill 21 has set up a constitutional face-off over the largely untested limits of parliamentary sovereignty in Canada, raising questions about whether the notwithstanding clause can be used to override guarantees that predate the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms. Passed by the National Assembly of Quebec in 2019, Bill 21 prohibits public servants from wearing religious garb or symbols while on the job, ostensibly in an effort to preserve the religious neutrality of the state. And don't you just love how they talk about parliamentary sovereignty? Hey, what about individual sovereignty? Right? Well, that's the thing. A principle it's not supposed to just mean, you know, that's a, that's the whole point of having a principle. And, and that's clarity of thought, clarity of mind, clarity of language, you know, that whole thing that I've talked about for years now, right? No wonder Canadians don't understand what it is to be free because they think that they have to constantly look towards government or parliament or even the Canadian Charter of Rights and Freedoms itself to find out, well, where am I allowed to be free? Well, once again, if that's your go-to methodology, to try to discover what it is to be a free human being, you're doing it wrong. That's not how liberty works, right? And our American counterparts, God love, well, at least those who recognize and have acknowledged that fact, and yeah, it stretches back for hundreds of years, this stuff was figured out long ago. Now, sure, they're going through their own modern constitutional crisis, right, because of the, the constant shift in the movement of the goalposts, and people not truly understanding, even down south, what it means to be free, thanks to the indoctrination, or should I say education, that they're receiving, right? But once again, the whole point of freedom of liberty or these Bill of Rights is if you're going to set up this thing called government, you know, something that has a monopoly of force or violence, which, yeah, I think it's a really bad idea to start with. But yeah, if you're going to do that, right, if you're going to set up a social experiment such as that, which is basically what's happened throughout all of human history, I don't know what it is with humans. They don't like to be free, apparently, right? 
But anyways, if you're going to set that up, yeah, basically the document that you're going to use, right, that's supposed to be the pretense of the social contract, the whole reason for that is, is not that the, the document itself grants you the rights. It's that the document is meant to basically acknowledge. It's supposed to lay out the wording and the description of what it is to be free and the very fact that governments are supposed to restrict and restrain themselves to the confines of those inherent and inalienable rights. But once again, you're not going to get that kind of messaging, not even from these experts or this contributor that's a special to the National Post. Once again, no, unfortunately, well, fortunately, unfortunately, depending on how you look at it, but now you got to get that kind of truth, that kind of unbridled, honest, in-your-face truth. That's only going to come from people like myself which, once again, is a sorry and sad state of affairs that in 2021, in the information age, there's only a very tiny minority of people such as myself who, has a, who also have, coincidentally, a really small reach and following who are willing to tell people the absolute honest truth about what it is to be a free human being. Hey, it is what it is. I try my best on a regular basis every day to help change, affect, and shift that but once again, I am just one representative of a very tiny minority who are mostly overlooked, ignored, or even worse yet, insulted for daring to try to properly educate and inform my fellow Canadians. Anyways, folks, I'll place a link to this article in the description of the video. Moving on to the next one. Canadian Libertarian, and I love liberty.